Hello and welcome, I'm Delia Delors. Through a series of programmes, I'll introduce you to many of the services, achievements and future improvements to St Lucia's health system. During the making of these programmes, I realised that I held many perceptions of what the health service was all about and I was surprised to find out about the many services available and the areas of expertise health professionals employ at our hospitals, polyclinics and wellness centres. I also talked to people responsible for planning our health system, from the Minister of Health and Wellness, Senator the Honourable Mary Isaac, to the providers of quality health care. This programme also features Creole interviews with Fennel Neptune and we'll ask you questions and give you their answers immediately and I know you'll get them right, right? Let's learn more about St Lucia's Health Service now. The Health and Wellness Minister says health personnel understand the importance of confidentiality and she commends health workers for their service and commitment. Understanding how strategic governance works community and mental wellness health services explained, and the importance of preventative health. But first, public not aware of many services on offer. A wide range of services are provided, not only at hospitals, but also at clinics, wellness centres and outreach programmes. Anyone can attend these health services no matter where they live. St Lucia's health personnel are not as qualified as international teams. St Lucia's medical professionals and staff are trained and retrained in St Lucia and internationally. This is an ongoing procedure and a job requirement. People with mental health issues are demonised. Yes, people still think that way, but they couldn't be more further away from the truth. The stigma of healthcare is the problem. Mental health issues can be managed. Regina, you know, when it comes to St Lucia's healthcare, what improvements have you seen and what would you like to see in going forward? I have noticed with suicide and depression becoming more of a concern in this, in this country that there's been more attention to that area. I've seen a lot of advertisements and on social media and even on commercials about counseling and treatment in, for different types of um, mental illness areas. So as far as what I would like to see, I've also heard a lot of reports on elder abuse and particularly in, with people who have Alzheimer's and dementia. So I would really like to see awareness in this area. There's no cure for it, so I believe that with all the research and evidence out there that we can find um, ways to prevent the risk factors of developing Alzheimer's and dementia. And if we can reach it from that end, that lowers the, the numbers in the next 20 years. Because St. Lucia is also part of a, a group of um, countries that are at higher risk for incidents in the next 20 years. Our aging population is a little bit, well, it's more older and then younger. And since we have, um, most of the Caribbeans actually have uh, people, families who are abroad, and so that even leaves less, that leaves less people um, to care for those. So there's areas in that same area is the people affected with the dementia, the families who are caring for them, and then the professionals who are caring for them. And there needs to be a lot of tension with all of it because it's not just an individual condition, it's not just a family condition, it's a community condition. And it's not just something that the government has to do. We all need to do it too. We all need to participate and help. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Producing this program helped me to understand the functions and services the Ministry of Health and Wellness provides. It enforced very quickly how I relied on my common sense and level of intelligence and what acquaintances told me, and so I made assumptions about the health services available to me. I say this to you to prove that if I didn't go straight to the source of information, I wouldn't know the facts. I assumed that St Lucia's health system could not provide adequate diagnosis, wasn't able to plan proper care, and thinking about the finances of it all was daunting. I was placing full responsibility of my health education onto the ministry. Are we in the same boat? Fact is, we have a responsibility to ask questions about our health care. Let's pay a visit to the Minister of Health and Wellness, Senator the Honourable Mary Isaac. Hello Minister, I'm so glad that I had the opportunity to speak with you because during the producing of these videos I recognise that health, Ministry of Health 
must be one of the most important, perhaps it is the most important ministry because without our health, we can't work, rest or play. Now, as the health and men wellness minister, the buck stops with you. How do you decide how you need to go ahead with your remit? How do you decide about the strategy that the ministry should take? Well, you know of the incidences of um, NCDs in St. Lucia, and one, of, um, one that is on top of our list is um, the whole issue of diabetes. So we have a whole long list of people waiting to um, get dialysis in St. Lucia. And um, what we have done is we have um, increased the amount of people that we can see on a regular basis, we can dialyze on a regular basis. So we have extended our care to provide an additional shift in the um, dialysis units. And this, I believe, is a great accomplishment because we have been able to take on a lot more patients who are waiting um, you know, to, to get um, care in our dialysis room. So that is a major accomplishment, not only for the ministry, but for the patients and for the entire country. The ministry have always had plans, yeah? because all the government ministries have plans, they are strategic plans and so on. But what we found when I came into office is a very scattered system. It, it, it's very chaotic and um, there does not seem to have any kind of, um, you know, methodology to really address a lot of the issues that we have in health. What we are doing right now is we are um, putting together a plan that is very holistic, a plan that starts with primary care, um, in order for us to address a lot of the care that we need at the end of the spectrum. So we are focusing more on primary care and also looking at the issues that we have on the ground right now. So it is a very holistic plan that we have for healthcare. And I think that our healthcare system is in a much better place right now. Um, you have a lot of issues because we, we are encountering a lot of issues and what is happening now is we are actually bringing them to the fore. They are actually coming out and we have to deal with them because they have become so big, you know. So in dealing with some of these issues, we have decided that we must focus on everything in healthcare at the same time because you cannot look at the, the end of the, the problem before you look at the source of the problem. So like I said, primary care has to be strengthened and then at the same time, simultaneously, we are taking care of the current issues. So it is quite a burden that we have to deal with when you're looking at healthcare in St. Lucia. You know that we have the OKEU, we are transiting from Victoria Hospital into OKEU. OKEU has a lot more equipment it, it will require a lot more human resource capital. It will require a lot more finances than we have currently. And those finances have to come from somewhere. So all of these challenges we have to be able to deal with and we have to be able to deal with it all at once. So this is taking some time because it is a humongous task. We have never in our history had to transit from one hospital into a hospital that is, a, this is a state-of-the-art hospital. And although we have spent a lot of money bringing it up to what it is supposed to be, we are still continuing to spend money so that we can have a product we can move into, and when we move into it, it will function properly. So our plan includes all of these different issues. We are looking at infrastructure, we are looking at human resource capital, we are looking at finances, you name it, and we have to deal with it at this point in time. I've met doctors, nurses, administrators, so many people who work in the healthcare system, and I was amazed by the compassion, the passion, everything that they go through, and I think sometimes the public forget that the service is provided by people just like them. Can you speak to that? You, you are quite right, because right now we have the highest amount of, I would say, sick people on our hands to take care of. Our NCDs are at an all-time high. 
we have other diseases that you know you are, you are looking at and finance in terms of um, agencies financing healthcare is at an all-time low you do not have so much um, coming from the EU coming from you know the US coming from those other international agencies that used to assist before so most of it has to come from government purse and that is where our doctors and our nurses come in they understand the situation that we are in as a small island state and these people come in on a daily basis they give their all mm -hmm. and they they go over and above you know the call of duty to serve our our population they are doing so with very limited resources as you know victoria hospital the old plant is in terrible shape and no matter what happens they hang in there and they provide mm -hmm. the services for the people of St. Lucia. So these people really have to be applauded. You know, we do have one or two bad apples, you know, but that does not come close to the amount of hardworking people we have in that system that is causing it to function as efficiently as it is right now. I, I think a lot of times there's a lot of, uh, you know, um, negativity going on out there about um, the Ministry of Health. But we must understand that that ministry deals with, very, with a very critical subject. And um, patient confidentiality is very, very high on our agenda. Sometimes things come out and we really cannot expose certain information to the public. Because you are dealing with people who are already sick. You are dealing with people who are already in a mental state that, that necessitate that we be sensitive mm -hmm. about the issues. So a lot of times you hear all the negativity and people are not sensitive enough about the, the area that the Ministry of Health staff serves. So, and, and given our, like I said, our limited resources and the marvelous work that um, these workers are doing, the Ministry of Health is really very pressed in terms of staffing, in terms of the resources that we need to do the job. And, um, you know, people tend to just take the negativity and spread it all over the place with little regard for the work that the Ministry is doing. But I would want St. Lucia to look at all the positive things that's coming out of the ministry, all the help, all the assistance that we give to everybody who is in need, who come to us. We help them in one way or another, whether it is to give them free medication because they cannot afford to pay for the medicine, free surgery because they cannot afford to pay for it, whether it is to call on doctors and nurses to assist them in one way or another, giving a lot of charity to a lot of people in St. Lucia. Um, I think that we as a people, as a country, ought to be very, very grateful that we have the workers and these people at the Ministry of Health who do not just go out there and blab people's business because they recognize that um, people's business, the business that they deal with, the people that they deal with require us to, to, um, to maintain a level of confidentiality. I have a question for you now with the answer provided right afterwards, followed by the Creole segment with Fanel Matthew. Question. What is one of the major achievements of the Ministry of Health and Wellness? Is it A. Extended care for diabetics? B. Knowing the number of patients being treated in hospitals? The answer is A. Extended care for diabetics. Extended care for diabetics is an achievement not only for the ministry, but for the large number of people suffering from diabetes. L'ay peni pou kalite la vie a moun, sate se yon ki tou e potan. Se pou wezon sa la, menis pou sate ni weskosabilite a, pou asiwe polisi sate peyi a an od. Menis pou sate senate onewab Mary Isaac, pale de achievement yo an minister de sate. Money on shy achievement at the ministry, at the ministry something. It's not just some way, but it's that all the money that you have to buy at the line of something. The other day, when all the money is malade, it's that all the money that you have to present to your hospital, all the quality of your malade. 
Et puis, nous n'y pouvons pas mettre les choses en place pour ça, pour chiper ces gens. Donc, actuellement, là, nous avons chipé un chai moun, moun qui passe à payer pour, pour yon acheter un med, moun qui passe à payer pour yon sa ou docteur, moun qui passe à payer pour quantité de différents bagages. Nous avons assuré que ces gens là ou les docteurs, ces gens là jouent un traitement dat qui est supposé jouer. Là, les gens um, qui ne pas prendre le vaccin, qui ne pas vacciner les maillots, tous ces bagages là nous avons assuré que les gens prennent précaution et puis faire ces bagages là Là, les gens qui ne pas prendre le vaccin, bien. Et puis, le ministre a un chai programme qui a aidé les gens à faire ces bagages là Là, le programme qui a indiqué ces gens about bagay dat ki yo yo supposé fè la ni moun ki ka fè ich yo yo pa yo pa pran pou fè se ich la um, et puis ministre a ka ba yo difon bagay pou protekte ko yo et puis tout bagay kon sa kon ministre a ka ka ha pou an chay mach pou ede an chay moun ki malade la ou ka de manye nou ni an chay moun ici la ki ni diabetes avec ces moun sa la on chay yo pa sa paye pou treatment la yo ka jwenn mais nou ka stil ba yo treatment Actuellement, là, nous n'avons jamais eu un lot de chiffres à la dialysis. Là, nous n'avons pas eu de puisque nous exorbons. Mm -hmm. Là, nous avons eu un qui a besoin de dialysis. So, nous avons eu un chiffre neuf et puis nous avons um, eu plus de chiffres de dialysis pour la petite chiffre neuf qui nous avons mis. Le ministre a aussi parlé du plan ministère qui a développé pour faire sortir un cette liste de ce qui est venu. Un plan nous qui a développé par cette ici, c'est un plan qui a parlé pour vous avant de venir malade. Mm -hmm. C'est ça nous qui a créé Preventative Care. Donc so, nous voulons aller voir le docteur, si c'est deux trois fois par l'année, pour mettre ça, pour, pour assurer qu'il ne ou pas ou pa jouer de malade. Si c'est un petit malade ou ni, nous voulons assurer qu'il est mm. malade ça là, ou, ou, um, ou jouer de assez bon, ou savoir qu'il est assez bon. Ne. Donc, so tout ça allait où est docteur et puis docteur ça a chipé ça va où. Nous pas voulu plan, nous quand mettant place à ses côtés, nous pas voulu mon espérer juste là où j'ai trop malade et puis docteur passe ça va où j'ai vision encore. Puis on s'est déjà souhaité là sur un couche l'hôpital et puis on s'est vu ça qui est arrivé où. Nous voulions aller où est docteur en avant, il est venu malade. Tous les années on a checké où, so that on pas qu'à y venir malade sans nécessaire avec um, nous qu'à y chipper malade là. Um, le, it just a commencement et puis pas les gens trop tard. So, ça c'est la première part en dedans plan. Non? Avec, um, après ça, nous avons regardé toutes les autres maladies, nous ni avec regardé comment nous avons eu le remède, comment nous avons eu le chipé, so nous avons um, arrêté à danser les malades. Là, um, la, nous avons juste eu pour ça aider nous. Um, et de yon et puis ba yon oui med et puis ba yon comme ça parce que à dans maladie j'ai pauvre trop et donc c'est ça nous voulons empêcher fait plus à dire dans le plan de date qui nous n'est pour cette liste là nous nous savons nous qu'à sortir à vie l'hôpital là victoria hospital puisque vie l'hôpital là est très vieux et puis on chai bagay ka ka tombe so quand yon ban nous l'hôpital neuf ça là european union n'a ban nous bel l'hôpital neuf nous avons tiré ces gens dans l'hôpital Victoria Hospital et puis nous mettons les dans l'hôpital Neuf. Ici, côté des gens qui ont occupé la santé avant de arriver. Nous voulons que les gens ne soient pas affectés par les gens qui ont affecté tous les organes dans le corps. Nous voulons un pays qui a pris la responsabilité pour la santé. Plutôt pour yon quitter quand yon vini malade et puis pour yon l'adjé quand yon a sous le gouvernement. C'est quand yon paye ça la nouvelle. Nous voulons un, un système côté moun ka pour vaccin yon, moun ka a yon type docteur yon avant yon vini malade et puis moun ki ja malade ki besoin ke yon ka vini l'hôpital, yon ka vini dans ce health center, ce clinique là. Et donc nous voulons Saint Lysien Savdat ki, nous ni clinique tout partout en dedans pays ya. Mais ce n'est pas toute clinique qui a couru à même les jours à l'ouvre et courir. L'année est pour ces cliniques qui a couru. Et puis nous voulons que les gens qui la clinique qui a couru pour que ça dans ces cliniques-là, pour que ça ait un petit peu de temps. 
ministère sati ni plan pour mettre chai pèz à son casati avant moun veni malade ça veut dire preventative care et oui bi non réponse là c'est oui The Strategic Planning Unit at the Ministry of Health and Wellness is the government's think tank. The right hand of the Permanent Secretary, they plan, execute, evaluate and assess the services of the Ministry. Here's Dwight Kallix, the Ministry's Chief Strategic Planner. I guess I could start with the history of our department. The department started with um, um, three persons, um, the Chief Planner, um, the Secretary and um, the uh, projects officer. That is, that was the, the, the core of, of, the, of the unit at the time. Um, as the unit grew, it grew to an expanded um, mandate of the ministry with respect to um, health reform. And it grew from the three um, um, to now, I think we have almost 10 persons within the unit. Um, and it grew to reflect the, the, the different services that are required and the different functions of the, the ministry. So, for instance, um, we have, as part of the unit, we have um, a health planner, we have a social planner, we have research officers, uh, we have um, a projects unit, um, and more recently we have added um, the quality and um, monitoring evaluation components to the, to the unit. The Ministry of Health ha have, has a very key mandate in terms of um, protecting the health of the nation. That is our primary mandate. Um, but within that, there are many, many facets. We need to look at um, policy formulation for the health sector. That's, that's key um, to the Ministry of Health. We need to look at um, monitoring evaluation of our um, health status, um, because we have to plan and deliver programs with respect to um, the changing health profile that we have. We have to look at um, setting the standards, okay? Because if we are to deliver services, it must be to a particular standard, to a particular quality. We also have a clear mandate with respect to informing the public with respect to um, health education, um, ensuring um, there is a competent and reliable workforce to deliver um, the health service that um, we are supposed to, as well as um, doing the overall, not only in the public sector, but the private sector, monitoring of that, that, that entire health sector. So within there, there is this broad mandate that we are charged with, and it speaks to ensuring that um, there is a health sector that could provide efficient, reliable, timely um, health services to the populace. Um, by, by way of achievement, um, we have been able uh, um, to, um, in keeping with the, the mandate for health sector reform, to produce our uh, national strategic plan, within which sets out um, some of the core principles in terms of health service delivery. Um, I'm proud to say that um, we, as a unit, uh, from the beginning of um, every budget year, assess the resources given to us within health, and we implement the full capital program. We uh, also um, work with each of the heads um, to monitor and implement their programs. And it's through these programs that we are able to meet those health gains, those positive health outcomes. So whether it is environmental health, whether it is um, Victoria now OKEU, 
whether it is Grusley or Sufre down in the south, we are the officers that integrate and interface with the heads to ensure that these programs are implemented. So we have, we have some small successes on our belt. Um, the health information system started with, with a thought with corporate planning and epidemiology. Um, the new national hospital also started with a thought and um, putting in place the necessary requirements that the EU now um, accepted and gave us that the, the biggest gift that they have ever given um, to any single country within this, this particular region. So we are the movers and shakers in the background. We are the ones that sit and, and work through the night to ensure that these programs are met, these programs are delivered. Um, I know we don't take any accolades, um, but um, the team and myself, we work very hard to at least achieve those health outcomes. Mr. Calix continued by giving a description of the health sector and the overall services provided by the Ministry of Health and Wellness. With reference to the Strat Plan and the services and our core, um, the, the delivery of our core set of services, our Strat Plan has um, seven core drivers. We have seven core drivers, um, and with that, I will I'll move in into the the description of how we deliver those services. Uh, so we have um, organization and management. We have um, sustainable health gains. We are looking at um, um, efficiency, cost efficiency, and effectiveness in terms of the delivery of services. Uh, information system, infrastructure, quality. These are the core drivers of our health system. And all of that is um, delivered through a, a, a core infrastructure. We have uh, at present 33 health centers um, with uh, two general hospitals, um, both which are essentially on its way to completion. We have two district, um, um, two district um, hospitals, that's Denry and Sufre, and we have a polyclinic. So within um, that infrastructure, um, the Ministry of Health actually delivers its, its, its cost sets of services, health promotion and education, disease prevention and management, um, diagnostic services, uh, treatment and management. So when we speak of um, non-communicable diseases, the treatment and management is delivered through um, the length and breadth of the island, through our wellness centers, through our, our polyclinic. Um, disease surveillance and outbreak investigation and management, um, rehabilitative and palliative care. So that speaks to the services, um, our secondary services delivered through our hospitals and our tertiary institutions, the mental health and also turning point. With respect to um, our general services, um, the Ministry of Health respo is responsible to deliver um, our, our within the infrastructure that we have for the health sector, we deliver um, core services like um, health and education, health promotion, our disease prevention um, that speaks to environmental health, our port health programs, and given the new and emerging um, infectious diseases, we now dealing with chikungunya, Zika, um, H1N1. All of these are essential right, in terms of doing our disease prevention. So environmental health becomes very critical in terms of food management, water, um, um, water investigations to ensure that we have good potable water and so on. So very important. 
Um, we also look at um, diagnostic services, palliative care, and rehabilitative, rehabilitative services. And these are the core um, services when we, we speak of um, our secondary services in tertiary care. Um, that covers services at our Medellin Heights complex, which now would house our Owen King, our mental wellness and our turning point institutions, as well as St. Jude's. Um, we are, the, some of these services are now also um, delivered within our district, our district hospitals, which is Sufer and Denry. Um, we also look at treatment and management, um, pharmaceutical services, disease surveillance and outbreak investigation. Um, all of these are um, delivered through the length and breadth through the um, wellness centers um, that we have spread across the island. Question. The Strategic Planning Department answers all your needs in the health service, true or false? Answer. False. The Strategic Planning Department plan, execute, evaluate, educate and provide access to health services. They are the government's think tank. Adam Minister de Sote, no ne your unit, Sassi Corporate Planning. Kini was consabilite a pou kondwi diweks yon minister a ka ale. Yonet sa la, o se ni a go wol pou jwe a kalite servis la minister a ka yon ofe man pibik la. Yon se ni wes consabilite a pou fe plan, ek wi vizite se servis la a sekta sa te ya. Yon kwa achievement yonet corporate planning, se kote avan a ta pase, yon te ni twa twa va e selman, me a pweza yonet la ni a pipwe dis twa va e. Chef officier qui est responsable pour le plan secteur santé, Dwight Calix, parle de l'importance de la poissie qui est possible de la santé et de la service santé qui est bon et avélable. Monsieur Calix dit que le ministère n'a pas de responsabilité pour protéger la santé de la santé et de la santé 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 pour le secteur santé qui est venu visiter le côté de la santé de la santé. Les venus pour placer nous en ligne de santé. Minister de Sante ose ni pou mette plan ek pougwama plas ki ka ya ling e pe vywanman Sante ya, ki ka chanje. Yo si ni pou asiwe se twavaye Sante an nod pou delivoy servis Sante ki a bo Sante. S Unit Corporate Planning wes kosa pou asiwe Minister de Sante ka ale a bo diweksyon. E, oui, B, non. We pense la se, oui. St. Lucia's primary health care consists of community-based care, immunization and mental health. The St. Lucia National Mental Wellness Center is a specialized health care facility which provides psychiatric care. It is located at the Millennium Heights Medical Complex in Castries. To tell us more about the St. Lucia National Mental Wellness Center, here's its executive director, Jennifer Forrester. The St. Lucia National Mental Wellness Center is a tertiary care facility. It is one of the facilities of the new medical heights complex. It was established in 2010 or commissioned in 2010 as part of the national policy towards mental health reform. We have 110 beds at this facility and part of which of those 110 beds is specially dedicated to children and adolescents. All of our services are free at the Mental Wellness Center. The Mental Wellness Center services are guided by the Mental Health Act of 2001. There is also a current revision of the Mental Health Bill of 2008. This, however, has not been passed and acted by Parliament. Currently guided by the Mental Health Hospitals Act of 2001, and in addition, there is a current revision of the, a bill, a mental health bill of 2008. It's under review. It has not been passed and enacted by Parliament, but this is um, also an upgrade when it is passed by Parliament to our mental health um, to support our mental health act of 2001. The facility was just one component of the mental health reform project, as this is a national policy. And this also encompassed the national mental sorry, the mental reform also included legislation. And I spoke of the, the Act of 2001 and also the revision of the bill for 2008. 
and was also supported by mental health policy. So moving from Golden Oak Hospital into this facility here was really a welcomed and needed um, addition or um, expansion of mental health services, improvement of mental health services, where we offer our services in an environment that is user friendly and that patients can be able to be rehabilitated towards um, providing being a part of the society. Our services are all offered free to the general public and um, what we do, we are constantly striving to ensure that our services are, are always improving based upon the data we collect here and also our national statistics. And based upon this, this, this um, information, we have recently introduced or at one point we introduced a child and adolescent unit for children only. We also recently introduced an in-house dental clinic of all of the services are free. It is a comprehensive service to the public. We are strengthening our psychological services to the public as well. And um, we also establish a national helpline. This is a 203 helpline that is used. It is manned by 24 hours by trained call responders. And this is what we are offering at this other facility. I just want to assure the public that our services are here are confidential and despite the fact that we all know that there is a stigma attached to mental illness, we at the service strive as, as much as possible to be professional and to provide care in, a, in an environment that is very conducive and supportive towards ensuring that persons are rehabilitated and can function in their day-to-day lives. Call the St. Lucia National Health Helpline from any phone at any time. The number is 203 and it's free. The helpline provides services for persons having suicidal thoughts or other overwhelming emotions. Question. The St. Lucia National Wellness Centre's services are confidential and provides care that is supportive to patients and their families. True or false? Answer. True. Services at the St. Lucia National Wellness Centre are confidential and provides care in an environment that is conducive and supportive to patients and their families so that they can all have a better quality of life. Question. The St. Lucia National Health Helpline number is 203. True or false? Answer. True. If you have suicidal thoughts or other overwhelming emotions, Call the St. Lucia National Health Helpline by dialing 203 from any phone at any time. The call is free. Accepta sortir l'ani za fe di sorti sevel sa se mental health. Ki bi e potan. E pi se pou wezon sa la, minister di sorti te wai nesese pou etabli a center mental wellness. Ki kai pochi wè sevi psychiatric. E be sable di. A place kote moun ki ni problem e pi sevel yo sa jwen twet nan. Center Mental Wellness na, te etabli an lene 2010, ek osi ni a pi pwe desa twa va e. Center sa la, osi an pa e pi policy gouvenman pou fe chajman an zafè sa ti sevel. An facilite sa la, yo osi ni a pi pwe yon san diskouch ki yon ni espesyalmot pou ti mamay ek jenes. Tout servis yo ka ofè a fasilite a si pou anye. Moun pani pou peyi pou servis la. Direkte pou Center Mental Wellness la, Mamzel Jennifer Forrester, di ki organizasyon yi twavay bie wed pou asiwe servis la yo ka ofè vidi pli meye. Pou wezon sa la, yo ouver unit pou ti mamay ek jenes, yo si ouver klinik pou zafè sa ti bouch, epi yo si etabye help line, Kote moun ki ni problem ebe ka kachile twe koyo, sa safle di suwisayn, sa kuye li mwo deze wo twa, nepot le yo vle pale epe profesyonal, ek yo ka yi jwen asistans. Yo si pakay ni pou pe anye pou servis sa la. 
Yes, Osa Dino, key quality service you can offer a center mental wellness lab. A. Zafé Sote Sevel. B. Zafé Sote Bush pour moun ki ka visite center. C. Demash Helpline la pour moun pale di problem yo. Wepons la se, yo tout se service you ka offer. Have you ever felt stressed, anxious or overwhelmed by sudden situations? I know I have many times. The St. Lucia Health Helpline has been instrumental in listening and helping people to manage their mental wellness. Emotional distress can be extreme at times to the point that people become suicidal. We should not be afraid of or hold on to stigmas about the Mental Wellness Centre. Care is provided by a team of professionals ranging from psychiatrists, clinical counsellors, clinical psychologists, social workers and occupational therapists and they are supported by the nursing team, pharmacist and non-clinical staff. I asked Dr. Julius Gilliard to tell me about the services provided and the helpline. We are trying to extend the clinics to Wednesday. So Wednesdays we're trying to, to start off a, a child psychiatry clinic, child and adolescent psychiatry. So the Mondays and Thursdays would continue as the adult psychiatry clinics and the Wednesdays would be specifically for, for children and adolescents. As well, what has been happening is that we've had an improved staffing um, of the department. So we've, whereas before, when I came in here two years ago, it was just three consultants. We now have three junior doctors as well. So the services that we would offer to the persons who come to the clinic, as well as the persons who are, who are admitted to the units, would be improved because they would have more regular visits by the doctors and we would have, we're now able to discuss cases um, among ourselves and, and reach better decisions with regard to patient care. In addition, we've had improvement in the psychological department in that we've had an, another psychologist or clinical psychologist come on board so that the counseling is not only done by two persons and I, I know before those persons would have been overwhelmed by the, by the workload and now that is shared a little more. And we get a lot of assistance from the counselor of the helpline who as well shares in the in the cycle the counseling workload that the department um, experiences on a day by day basis. I think the public needs to know that Mental illness is not, it should not be demonized. So we live in the 21st century and whereas before it, it was demonized and persons were, were convinced that it was a spiritual thing, we are now sure that it is not and there is help. So anybody who is experiencing any kind of uh, mental distress and this is where, this is what is important. So persons who are distressed mentally are those who either seek help or are brought for help by their family members. And those persons can be assured that the help is available at the Mental Wellness Center, that we do have staff who are qualified and who are trained to help them which, with whatever situation that they may be encountering. So like I said earlier, persons who are acutely ill and severely ill who may need admission to hospital, they, if it's a first time admission, they will need to get a referral or clearance from an emergency room or uh, a, a general doctor, and then they would come to the center for admission if that, if that is necessary. Um, and we see all kinds of patients. We see from patients who are acutely psychotic to patients who are suicidal and who may be at high risk of, of attempting suicide or, or persons who have attempted recently who are still at high risk. So those persons can be treated either via the inpatient um, wards or if the illness is not uh, acute or not severe, then they can be seen at the outpatient clinic. But the help is available for everybody who, who, um, who needs it. It's called the St. Lucia National Health Helpline, and it was started in 2015. The government at the time saw the need for the services that are offered by the helpline. At, at the time, the suicide rate was between 13 and 15. What happened is that after the helpline was started, 
the, the rate went down to about seven. And that continued from 2015 until 2017, when the rate went back up to about 12. I'm not sure what was happening at the time, but in 2018, the rate went back down to three. So far this year, we've had three suicides, three completed suicides. The, service, the services that the helpline offers are that somebody who is feeling distressed, somebody with a lot of emotional distress would call and the responder would help them with those emotions. If they would do an evaluation of the person, so if the person is at high risk of suicide, then a safety plan would be done up with that person or with a relative of the person or a friend or whoever is close by. If that person is not able to be kept safe, then advice would be given to the person on the, on, the, on the end of the line that they should take the person to the nearest emergency room. If that person does not have somebody who is able to do that, then the police would be called and that person would be taken to the nearest emergency room for evaluation. And if need be, they would be brought to the wellness center for admission and treatment. If there is no risk of suicide or low risk of suicide, then an appointment would be made for that person to see the helpline counsellor. The, the counsellor would then help the person work on the emotions that they're having at the time and any other issues that they may be going through. A lot of the persons who call are persons who are depressed or very anxious or have issues that maybe came up suddenly that are making them feel overwhelmed. So those would be worked out with the counsellor and that person, would be, you could say, would be brought to a better place emotionally before they're discharged from counselling. The helpline is, persons are not as sensitized as they should be to the helpline, but it's catching on slowly but surely. We have had programs over the last two to three years where we're trying to bring the services more to light in the public. So, for example, last year we had an entire week for suicide prevention um, day, that's in, in September 10th last year. And that culminated with a health fair in the Constitution Park, but members of the public were, were really taught about suicide and the, the services that are available in St. Lucia to help them when they're having thoughts of suicide or any other distressing thoughts that would put them at risk of, of attempting suicide. Question. The St. Lucia National Health Helpline is for people with mental health issues. True or false? Answer. False. The St. Lucia National Health Helpline is for everyone, so whether you are concerned about your wellness, mental or otherwise, a trained counsellor is available for support and guidance. The service is confidential and manned 24 hours by trained call responders. Aba de mach la pou menaje maladi sevel a set li si si helpline na, ki senta mental wellness la ti itabli. Depuis l'établissement Helpline, le gouvernement a joué un gros progrès quand il y a des gens qui ont joué un coup de coup. Il y a des suicides. Il y a un psychiatriste, le docteur Julius Gilead, qui a parlé de l'importance pour que les lycéens puissent se faire là. Les lycéens ne savent pas que les lycéens sont importants. Il y a des gens qui ont joué un coup de 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 coup. Sevella ka kotole kwa a shay moun ka ka tout jou pa jou yo yo ni stress ka ka dilepi bo se moun sa le le yo si yo pa konet ki manye pou dilepi stress la yi sa kouman se ka afekte yo si yi kouman se ka afekte Sevella yo yo pe wive ada a leta ko yo depres o yo kouman se ka develope anxiety o lot maladi ki sa fe yo ko se moun la ka di a la ou ya yo ka fe yo a kreye ko a fou koupan po pou apeche tout sa wive moun ni pou kouman se ka po ke se vel yo pli ti a moun ni problem yo ka we yo kouman se ka depres o yo kouman se ka develope anxiety o lot maladi se vel yo sa apoche Wellness Center, la ni dokter ki sa we yo, ki sa madi yo kwestyo pou sav exaktiman ki sa yo ka pase, ek si yo bizwe wimed, yo ka jwen wimed, si yo bizwe we a psychologist or counselor, 
yo sa am refer yo pour e counselor pour pour deal et puis ça yo ka yo ka passer um non ni de clinique non clinique les les mardi les les mardi bon matin et les jeudi bon matin nous ka pou ça try pour mettre à à l'autre clinique les les vendredi les mercredi sorry les mercredi pour ces ces tima mais là avec ces teenager que ça les ça commencer public ka savent puis ça mettre à les radio bon c'est à ces clinique là là toujours ni docteur la toujours ni comme cela pour aussi comme dit le docteur ouais c'est mon là yo yo ka refer yo pour service là qui yo yo quoi qui yo ka ka faire yo plus bénéfice so si yo besoin de comme cela yo ka refer yo comme cela si yo besoin de remède ou si yo besoin um l'idée vous mettre là et comme cela yo ka yo ka faire arrangement pour pour yo joindre service là Usadin epi servis hermen si yo moun sa jwenn sa fè konsey avilab nepot le yo kriye e wi bi no we pos la se wi The Ministry of Health and Wellness provides dental services for everyone, but the ministry also has a surgery specifically for patients of the St Lucia Mental Wellness Centre, where they can receive many procedures like cleanings, fillings and extractions. I asked Dr. Janine Dublin McIntyre about the services the unit provides. We do um, consultations, examinations, cleanings, fillings, extractions. We also give oral health education to the patients and on occasion we go to the units to do to help them with their proper tooth brushing techniques. I think most of the patients are very eager to have their teeth cleaned because some of them because they don't get that access to the health centers and you have to pay for the service they have not done it in a long time so when they hear the services provided here they most of them come in and ask when can they clean their teeth we say that a lot also we see quite a bit of extraction because because there's a fee and some person may not have that money to pay they may have something they have had in a while to attend to and then when they order the services they come and ask if they can get their teeth extracted if they have something pending When they come in, they, we either get them through, um, we get them for referral from when they come in as patients, when they are admitted, the doctors see them, they give us a referral and we see them, or if they come from out and they see the doctor, they give them also a referral form to see us. So they're always referred by the doctor before we can attend to them. Generally, um, people don't see dental care as important as maybe going to a doctor for a general checkup. But what we want them to know is that the your oral health is the gateway to your overall health. We need our teeth to chew our food to nourish our bodies, you need your teeth for your smile, to maintain your face structure, um, you need your teeth to speak clearly. Also with um bad oral hygiene, people are at risk for um, gum disease, periodontal disease, chronic diseases like um, diabetes, stroke, heart disease. Pregnant mothers also, if they have bad oral hygiene, it can also be an increased risk for them to have premature babies. So persons need to know that going to the dentist regularly is very important, at least twice a year, and they need to make it, put it on their schedule, like something they have to do, not just something if you have a pain or something bothering you that you have to go to the dentist. Question. Dental services for patients at the St. Lucia Mental Wellness Center include cleanings, fillings and extractions. True or false? Answer. True. A fully equipped dental surgery is available at the National Mental Wellness Center for patients. More services are provided here than a regular health center. Minister is at the OC White Reporter for Portuguese Service Dentists. By se patient la a center mental wellness la. Se patient la ni opportunity a pou jwenn service dentist kon nettoye dan yo, fè fillings, ek osi wache pièce vie dan ki bouche yo. Yo si ka pochiwe patient a epi formasyon a sou manye pou point ka bouche yo. Yo dentist a center mental wellness la Dr. Jenny Dublin Mapinsayo. Pale di apotas la pou moun pou ka dan yo. 
et de qui service d'un avait la patient à qui a visité et ça qui a resté au centre mental wellness là. Est-ce que vous avez dit que les services de ces patients là en centre mental wellness là qui a visité et nettoyer dans B, faire filings, C, washer pièces de dents qui ont bouche, D, information à ce manière pour quoi qu'on bouche. The primary care department provides health services of a preventative nature, promoting health and wellness among the population. Health education and promotion is critical in reducing illnesses and diseases and lessens complications from diseases. Immunization plays a huge part in preventative care and it's an area that the Ministry of Health and Wellness can boast many achievements. Nurse Julieta Frederick Cassius tells us more. Okay, so the role of community health nursing um, service is to be able to connect, coordinate all of the activities within all of the wellness centers on the island. So we do have 34 wellness centers that provide um, primary care services. And when we say primary care services, so we talk about preventive health. We're talking about working with individuals, families and communities to help them promote the health and also to maintain wellness. So our focus is not on diseases, but our focus is on promoting and maintaining health within the community. We have done quite a bit of improvement with our services. We have increased um, certain services that we were not offering before and also strengthened on some services. Um, for example, we have introduced the diabetic retinopathy um, program. We, we have been working with um, the public in terms of increasing eye screening throughout the, 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 um, the islands, um, but we have enhanced that program by including a component of diabetic retinopathy, where all diabetics are going to be screened. They will come into the facility and persons who require laser treatment will be, um, will be uh, managed accordingly. Um, also, we have improved in our immunization program. We have introduced certain new vaccines into our schedule and that has worked very well for us in terms of improving um, our vaccination coverage and also reducing outbreaks of diseases that can be prevented um, through vaccines. In addition to that, we have also increased our specialist um, clinics in terms of um, obstetric and gynecologists. So we do have um, um, an obstetrician and gynecologist on island who goes throughout the um, wellness centers um, to be able to provide that kind of care to our pregnant women. Um, also, we have our pediatric uh, services throughout the islands as well, and also um, in terms of our podiatry. This is one of the services that we've not had um, for a while, but for over a few years we have been able to introduce um, that service to be able to provide food care and food assessments for our diabetics on that island. So um, overall, with the um, help of external partners, we have been able to train and retrain our um, nursing staff and other staff to be able to improve on our services and also improve, um, include new um, services into our into our into our program. Um, also, we have been, we don't only work as um, a nursing team; we work with other healthcare uh, professionals um, as a team to be able to coordinate our health activities. So we work with the dental um, department, we work with the Bureau of Health Education, we work with the nutrition officers. So it's really a team approach out there in the community to be able to provide that kind of level of care to individuals, to families, to communities. Um, also, we have increased a lot on our outreach programs. So we realize persons pattern of um, accessing care has um, kind of shifted. So to increase accessibility, so we actually go out into the communities, we um, target various groups within the communities to be able to um, further um, make available those services to persons who otherwise would not be coming into our facilities. We do provide quite a bit of services in, in, the, in the community. 
um, at Ferrando Health Wellness Centers and or in the community as well. So we have um, antenatal services, we have services for pregnant women, um, we have for the mother when she delivers, so we care for the child as well. We have um, pap smears that we offer to our women. Let me just say generally cancer screening because not only for the women but we also have cancer screening for the men. The men can come into the facility and get screened and we can send them for necessary investigations. Um, we also um, over the years have tried um, to include our men in our clinics because realize this is one such group um, that we have not placed a lot of focus on. So we actually have some facilities that do have men um, programs targeted for just men. So where we want to encourage the men to come forward, you know, and to give them, um, empower them with information that they can make informed choices about their health. In terms of um, the public's perception of our services, um, even though I talk when talking to persons within the community, they are not um, aware of the services, the multitude of services that we offer in the community. And we do provide a wide range of services in the, at the wellness centers in terms of encouraging persons to promote um, wellness um, with themselves, of course, and with their, with their um, families. Um, so, in terms of the, the services, persons are of the belief that is of a poor quality, which is really not so. Our services are very high quality and also um, they are offered by trained, experienced um, personnel within in the community. We do go through refresher courses, we go through training just to be updated and abreast with current trends and in terms of management and care of persons. And that includes persons with chronic diseases, that means the pregnant woman, that means the child. So it's a, a wide range of services that are available in the community. And persons um, need to know what services uh, there are. So we encourage persons to visit the wellness centers, speak, have a discussion with the staff there, to be able to identify what are the services that are available and the service, services that are of interest to them and they can take advantage of. Question. Podiatry is available to all and provides foot assessments and care, especially for diabetics. True or false? Answer. True. Podiatry has been reintroduced to provide foot assessments and care, especially for diabetics. Departement Community Nursing Service. C'est yon ki wes konsabilite pou pochi wes set lisye. E pi servis sate ki kai ede pou apeche difon maladi, et qu'à si vous avez bonne santé parmi la population. Le département a aussi coordonné des activités dans ces différentes places de santé dans cette liste. Il y a un pour couper à ce différents maladies et problèmes de ces maladies. Le département a aussi quoi et important pour indiquer les gens à ce santé. Le grand achievement du département, c'est la démarche pour joindre plus de gens vaccinés à différentes maladies. Yo si te fè go po gwe a servis la yo ka ofè ko pwè ka pie a pou moun e pi maladi pi sa dou, servis gynecology ek servis pwè ka zye a. Denyeman, yo o si fè po gwe a dimash la pou vizite moun a si komen la ki pa sa vinyan l'opital la e be plas sa ti a. Another is a good achievement in the Department of Community Nursing Service. This is a service that you can offer to be able to help you with the maladie of the disease. And yes, yes, no. The report is yes. The Bureau of Health Education's main aim is to influence change in the environment by educating individuals, organizations and society to help improve their understanding of health issues. I asked the Director of Health Education, Natasha Lloyd-Felix, what role the Bureau of Health Education served in the Ministry. Within the Bureau of Health Education, what we do is bring health to people. We're very people-centered, people-focused. Essentially, what we bring is heart to health. So we know typically health is seen in a very clinical way and persons sometimes feel detached from the messaging. They feel that they're not sufficiently au fait with issues pertaining to health. 
So what we try to do through our programming is improve person's understanding of health issues, whether it be preventative, preventative health or persons living with conditions that they know how to better manage their conditions. Our approach is through an ecological model, which simply means we look at various levels of intervention. We look at it through the individual, the family, the community. We look at organizations and communities, and then we look at the overall structure of society, be it through policy um, interventions. And so as a result of that, we have a very all-embracing approach to health. We look at health in a way that we can influence change, not only for the individual, but the environment within which individuals live, individuals work, and socialize. So in terms of what we do, our programs are cent centered within settings. Uh, as a result of that, you find that our interventions happens, happen in schools, communities, workplaces, and as a result of that, we target various audiences through our interventions. So though we look at health across the board, we realize that issues vary depending on which audience we want to reach or target. Through the department, our services are delivered within various settings, priority settings, which would include workplaces, schools, communities, and within our health institutions. We reach specific tar target audiences, which would be our school children, persons within active employment, etc., because we recognize health issues vary dependent on who it is you want to provide a health message to or deliver health information to. As a result of that, what would happen is that our programs would be aligned to the needs these audiences have. So within a school setting, for example, we would be given information on healthy eating habits, which would be supporting what has happened with the nutrition department with their own interventions. Within the workplace, we would look at how we encourage health practices within a working environment and so that persons can adopt healthy habits not only within their homes but within their workplace settings. And by doing that, what we find is that we are better able to align programs to the needs of the audiences we want to reach. Um, a lot of the interventions we undertake look at determinants of health. So we don't only look at person's current health status, but the factors that influence their health. And we know there are a number of factors that would result in how people's health is manifested. So these would include things like your current status in terms of employment or not being employed. We look at gender factors. We look also at resilience issues, whether the person is in within a setting of family support or not. So all all those come into play and as a result of that we work with a range of agencies not only within the Ministry of Health but outside of it be it other ally, allied um, government agencies NGOs community organizations because all of these influence and impact our health outcomes to some degree within that we have a number of programs that we implement one of which I think has been identified as one of our markers of success is the chronic disease self management program this program has been supported through funding from the Pan American Health Organization and has been endorsed by the standard Stanford University and is globally implemented as a standardized program and St. Lucia commenced our programming in 2015. During that time, we have been able to train persons to be trainers and implementers of the program. That program specifically targets persons living with chronic conditions cancer, diabetes, hypertension, etc., as well as their caregivers, because we know that chronic disease is a critical issue within St. Lucia. Now, knowing what I indicated earlier, that health promotion and health education looks at improving persons' understanding of health issues, that program is developed especially along those lines that we're looking for persons to understand their health issues and better control their health issues. But apart from looking at whatever condition they are diagnosed with, look at, we look at the determinants of their health, their eating habits, their budgeting, we look at things like stress, all the factors that would influence health. So that way we look not only at being li living or diagnosed with a condition, but factors that influence the condition, the determinants of their, their health, so that those persons can better manage and prevent complications of their um, diagnosis. 
to date we have done a number of training workshops and we have done it across the island and so we have found that the response over time has been improving because others have been able to indicate the benefits that they have achieved by undergoing the program which actually runs for six weeks um, we have had persons who have been able to reduce their dependence on medication for management of their conditions. We have had persons who were smokers who have actually been able to quit their habit of smoking. Persons have reduced alcohol intake. So the results have been real, tangible results, all of which we know can improve health outcomes. So it's not only about providing information but also providing skills, and that's critical to what our department does. It's one thing to have the information, but to be able, being able to provide persons with the skill sets to manage is what adds the value to what we do. So it's not just for persons to be able to know, but also for them to be able to do. Question. An ongoing health educator is St. Lucia's Chronic Disease Health Management Program, which targets people with chronic diseases like cancers, diabetes and hypertension. True or false? Answer, true. St. Lucia's successful Chronic Disease Health Management Program is a globally implemented program. It looks at factors that influence health like eating habits and stress so that patients are not just living or diagnosed with a condition but can be influenced to better manage and prevent complications of their illnesses. Bewa Poedika Siosati, Sasi, Bureau of Health Education, ni was kosabilite pou mene chanjman evivonma pa demash la kote yoka edike moun organizasyon ek sosiete ya pou ede yo fe po gwe a manye yo sa aji epi poblem sate. Ada e fwa pou delive komisyo sote ya, bi wo o si ni po gwama plas, kote yo ka fe twavay likol la, komin la, ek plas twavay moun. Yo gwa achivman bi wo po edikasyo sote ya se, po gwam la, Chronic Disease Self Management. Po gwam sa la, se yon ki ka pojwe si po bay moun, ki ni maladi kokose, presha, pisadu, fwe di ek plizye le zot maladi. Sa yo ka kwe kodisyo kronik. Po gwam sa la se yon ki jwen si po hod organizasyon pou sotye kawayib la pa ou. Ek ja bay moun etwenman pou twa vay epi set lesye pou menaje maladi sa la. Es ou sa di nou ki les po gwam e ba pi wo po edikasyon sotye ki ave la pou potiwe si po bay moun ki ni maladi kokose, presha, pisadu, pou edi ek plizye le zot maladi. A. Disease Management B. Chronic Disease Self Management We post la si Chronic Disease Self Management Visit your community's places of health and wellness. Talk to their staff. Learn about the services that interest you and take advantage of them. Many of the services are free. Ask staff if the services you require aren't provided at your local centre where you can go and in some cases, once a doctor's referral isn't needed, staff at your local centre can make an appointment for you. Men, don't forget there are many services that are developed and provided just for you. The Ministry of Health and Wellness has professional teams with ongoing training. Don't let your assumptions keep you stuck in fear. See you next time when we explore our health service. Goodbye.